How's it going, everyone? Ben Mills here, Principal Product Success Manager at ServiceNow, uh, focusing on ITAM. Uh, today, I'd like to talk with you about normalization data services. Um, before we hop in, um, I want to talk about Core Company. Core Company uh, is a table that is utilized across the entire platform, and it deals with any field that's going to reference things like customers, manufacturers, internal companies, vendors, or service pro providers. And this process is going to standardize these values where there may be many variations of one company name present in the core company table. Like in this example, uh, here are four variations of Microsoft. We have Microsoft with a capital M. We have an all lowercase variation of Microsoft, an all caps version of Microsoft. And then we have a version of Microsoft where the M and the I is capitalized. Normalization data services would seek to map all of these variations into this one standardized value of Microsoft with a capital M in the core company table. So what happens when we activate normalization data services? Well, we're going to get two new tables, uh, the first of which is called CDS client name. And this table is going to house all of the normalized company names. And we're going to get a second table. That second table is going to be called CDS client mapping. And in this table, this is going to contain all the variants of a company name that uh, we would be looking out for to standardize into a normalized value. So with that being said, I would like to uh, hop into the platform and look at how we can enable this feature using the guided setup. All right, so we are back and we are in an instance. Let's go ahead and navigate to the normalization data services guided setup. So we're gonna go to our filter navigator, um, normalization data services, and let's go to guided setup. Um, these guided setups are fantastic for ensuring that we are enabling these uh, types of features according to best practices because they give us wizard-like steps um, to uh, go through. So let's get started. And we'll get started here. And we'll see that this is going to be seven steps to complete. Uh, in this case, uh, I've already activated the plugin, but we're just going to go here. And there's going to be a, uh, an, an option for you to activate slash repair. We're just going to click that. Uh, and get the um, normalization data services activated. What that's going to do is make sure that we have the appropriate schema necessary to bring back the values um, that we're going to be uh, mapping to. Uh, once we're done here, we're going to mark that as complete and move on to our next step. Uh, our next step is going to be to download the normalized data. Uh, this content is going to come from ServiceNow. Uh, now, this step may take a while, so what we're going to do is we are going to start this, and once the download is complete, we're going to come back and continue to finish out the normalization data services uh, activation. Okay, it looks like the uh, normalization manufacturer names has completely downloaded. Uh, we can go ahead and close this out, and we can mark this step as complete. Uh, the next thing that we are going to want to do is we are going to want to update the reference qualifiers, right? So what this is going to do is it, it's going to update all the reference types uh, where company is referenced. So what, so, so what we're going to do is we're going to update the dictionary record reference specification uh, to use the new canonical filter, uh, which is the normalized name. So let's configure this. Fantastic, and let's begin the update. Um, we have a little over 2,000 records, so what we'll do is we will start the update, and we will come back as soon as this step has completed. Okay, we have finished the reference qualifiers update. Uh, we can see that we have some reference qualifiers that were skipped. Uh, this is normal, this is because um, these tables already had reference qualifiers in place. Uh, perfectly fine. We do have the ability to go in and manually update uh, these reference qualifiers. As you can see, we're going to add a condition um, to normalize is true on the reference qualifier. So to do that, um, we are going to go into the table that's referencing company. So in this case, ALM assets. Um, we are going to see the current reference qualifier here. We're going to add and normalized 
is true and we're going to update and then we will close out of there but but you can go through um uh, or you can script uh, scripted to where as we add that normalized is true uh, reference qualifiers to the ones that were skipped so now that we're done with update reference qualifiers um, we are going to mark this as complete uh, next thing we're going to do is we are going to validate uh, that the properties are enabled for normalization data services so let's configure let's go in um, so Reference qualifiers on all tables that reference company will be updated to the normalized field. Absolutely, we want enabled. Um, in this case, we do want the business rule that will automatically normalize manufacturer names for configuration items. Um, we will also want to enable discovery to use normalization uh, services for the manufacturer name. Um, we do want the uh, property for the normalization API enabled. And we do want to normalize the existing canonical core company records. So we're going to enable those. We're going to save. We're going to close. And we will mark that step as complete. Okay. So next we are going to look at normalizing the configuration items in the CMDB. So let us configure. Give that a moment. Now, uh, this is one that may take a little while. So what we're going to do is we are going to start the update and we will come right back afterward. All right, looks like we completed the update to the CMDB. So we're gonna close this one out. We're gonna mark as complete and move on to the next step. Um, next step uh, would be to normalize the configuration items CMDB model. Um, so finally, we're gonna go to configure. We're gonna start the update and that process has completed. Now we'll notice this last step here. Um, there is a step for normalized software asset management. In this case, we don't have um, asset management uh, enabled uh, in this instance. So this isn't a step that we would have to look at. So uh, what we're going to do now is um, we are going to look through uh, the core company table now to see exactly um, what NDS has done. Okay, now that we've enabled normalization data services, let's take a look at uh, some of the data that we should expect to see. So let's head on over to normalization. And first thing we'll notice is that first table that we spoke about at the beginning of the presentation, um, that's that CDS client name table. This table is gonna house all of the normalized names um, for your core company records. In our example earlier, we used Microsoft. So let's look at Microsoft. Fantastic, Microsoft. And what we'll see here is again, that canonical, that, that, that normalized version of Microsoft up here. And then below, we will see all of the mappings that kind of point to this Microsoft value. So if we have a bunch of data sources referencing Microsoft in various ways, um, that's and, and, and they're found to be as part of these normalized mappings, what it'll do is it'll reference the, the canonical name Microsoft uh, in the core company table. Um, we can kind of see this from another view. If we go over to the normalized mappings, that's the second table that, that we referenced at the beginning of our presentation. That's the CDS client mapping table. What you'll see here um, are the normalized mappings. So um, these would represent the discovered name, all the different ways that a core company record can be found and brought in. And all of those are gonna point uh, to a normalized name. So uh, let's navigate over to the core company table and see how this is working in practice. So let's go to core company. 
Okay, so first thing you're going to notice is, and that you're going to want to bring in, is that you're going to have a new field, and that field is going to call be, be called normalized, right? So this is going to indicate um, which field is being referenced across the platform for this core company record. So if we click through here, let's 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 see if we can find a couple of examples. So for instance, uh, we have AdTran showing up twice, um, but only the second version of AdTran is marked as normalized true. So in this case, this is going to be the company record that's uh, referenced uh, across the platform. Um, we can see the same thing with Autodesk here, Autodesk and Autodesk Inc. Uh, only one of those values are true. That's going to be the value that we're using across the uh, platform. Uh, Brother and Brother Industries, CA and CA Technologies, um, Cisco and Cisco Systems. Uh, only one value is true. Uh, and, 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 and that's what's going to be referenced across the platform when we are referencing this uh, uh, in the company field. So again, uh, this, this, this feature is going to bring a lot of business continuity and making sure that ac across the platform, we are referencing companies uh, in the same way. So I thank you for your time today. Uh, I hope you found today's session to be informative around normalization data services. Um, we do have a doc dedicated to this information on our doc site, so I would encourage you to utilize that if you have any further questions. Take care, and I'll see you around.